Good morning. We continue our Easter celebration on the third Sunday of Easter Tide with resurrection songs this morning. I invite you to take your worship guide and to stand with me, please, and to speak with strength to encourage those around you as we begin our worship of the Lord to this day. The Lord be with you. The Lord who calls us to worship him today is the same Jesus who refused temptation to worship the evil one. Rather than receive the glorious kingdoms of this world, he endured the shame of the cross and today is Lord of Lords and King of Kings. Now are gathered in him all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, glory and power. With the saints of all angels we say, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise.
Father, we come here this morning proclaiming the truth that Jesus is alive. And that in Christ, you have conquered all the worldly powers, Lord, that you have paid the penalty for our sin. And because of Jesus, we have strength for today and we have hope for tomorrow. God, we pray that you might meet us in this place, Lord. That those of us who are experiencing joy and who are rejoicing and who are um, full of gratitude today, that you would remind us of the hope we have because of you, Lord, and that for those of us who come to this place with heavy hearts, that you would also meet us, that you would remind us of your tenderness, of your love, your care, and your compassion, and that you would remind us that though sorrow tarries in the night, that joy comes in the morning. Lord, we set our eyes and our hopes and our affections on you, and we pray that you would work in us to make us more like Jesus in this time of worship together. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Good morning. Well, good morning and welcome here to Mountain Brook Baptist Church. We're so grateful that you have chosen to worship the Lord here with us this morning. And if this is your first time with us, you will find a four guest tab on your worship guide. We would encourage you to fill that out and then place that in the offering box as you leave the sanctuary today, just for one way for us to connect with you in the days to come. We would also love the chance to get to know you, and so we'll be in the narthex following this service, and we'd love to greet you, and we'd love to help you connect with a Sunday morning Bible study. We have those groups that meet at 10 o'clock after the service, and those are age graded for every age and stage of life. Would love to get you connected with one of those. By way of announcements, two things I want to let you know about. First, there's an insert in your worship guide for our next Project 119 Bible reading plan. This will start on April 21st. But if you don't have a way that you're reading through the scriptures, we would encourage you to join us each day. You can read along using the plan. You can also listen on our church podcast, and you can listen to that online or through Spotify, iTunes, on our website. We'd love for you to read scripture together with our church body. Finally, guys, I want to go ahead and put on your calendar. The next Sharpen Up start will come on Tuesday, April 23rd. So meet here at the church for breakfast and for a devotional before you head to work or school. We'll continue now in worship with our pastoral prayer. Um. I've, I've thought about writing a book called It's Hard to Be Human. Um, and my thought process in that is that we, as, as humans, I think in a fallen world, we um, balance the joy and the great things that we see happening around us and also the sorrow at the things that we see happening around us. Um, and even in amongst our church staff, I feel that way. Um, I want to make sure you all knew that Joel and Sarah Burks um, had their baby. Um, on Friday, Maggie Jean Burks, and so she is here, and she is doing well, Sarah's doing well, and so I um, just encourage you to pray for them uh, during this joyous and uh, challenging time in life. Uh, be praying for them, but they are doing well. Um, and then Joey Gleason, uh, our church custodian, who had been with the church almost 18 years, um, passed away, and um, we sent that email out, but I know not all of you perhaps received the email. And so um, just encourage you, it was, uh, it was sudden um, and unexpected. And so be praying for Joy's wife um, and sons um, and our church staff. You know, we work with Joy day in and day out. And um, a lot of joy is around this building for us. And so be praying for his family and be praying for our church staff. And then also I wanted you to know that um, Ron Henderson passed away. Uh, on Thursday, and uh, he and his family, I mean, his family is going to have not a funeral here, but they're going to receive family and friends in Hudson Hall tomorrow at one o'clock. So I wanted to make sure, I knew it was a short turnaround, so I wanted to make sure you knew that in case you know the Henderson family and would like um, to be here. As we prepare our hearts to pray together, I'm going to read from Hebrews chapter 2, 
beginning in verse 14. Since therefore the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it is not the angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he, he had to be made like his brothers in every respect so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God to make propitiation for the sins of the people. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. I'd like you to pray with me. Lord, we are so grateful um, for another day of life. We thank you that we have a desire to worship you and to draw near to you together as a people. And we thank you for the ability to be in this room. Lord, there are so many things that we are um, so prone to take for granted. And so, Lord, I pray that you would fill us, um, even today, with a special sense of gratitude as we can contemplate your kindness and your mercy and your grace and your love for us. We rejoice with those in our church family and our church staff who are rejoicing today. We continue to pray for Spencer and Lily Beth Towns and the Towns family in the birth of Marshall Graham. And we rejoice with Joel and Sarah in the birth of their daughter, Maggie Jean. Lord, for each of these families, we pray that you would continue to give them the grace that they need for the living of these days, that you would help them to have wisdom and discernment on how to raise their children in such a way that they may one day place their faith in Christ and experience abundant eternal life through faith in him. And we pray that we, as church family for these children, would be faithful to do what we can to walk alongside these families and to help them in this task. Lord, we continue to pray for those who um, hearts are heavy with grief, um, even this morning. Continue to pray for Billy and Shirley Austin and the death of their son, Barry. Continue to pray for the family of Neil Moore, for Barbara Patton and the death of her brother-in-law, Brian Cooper Patton, for the family and friends of Winford Yarbrough, for Beth Henderson and her children and Dr. Ron Henderson's passing, and for Robin and Sam and Cole, and for our whole church community and Joy's death. Remind us of the hope of the resurrection. That even as we grieve, we don't do, though, do so as those who don't have hope. But we know that all of us who die in Christ, our lives are not in vain. So we pray that you would help us, Lord, to apply the good news of the gospel to our own hearts and that you would help us through our lives and through the words that we say to go out into our community and the places where you put us and be bearers of the good news, the hope and the resurrection that comes through faith for all people the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, the one in whose name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we turn to the page now and look toward the sermon that will be delivered in his title, we shall be like and it's from 1 John chapter 3. And so for uh, the scripture that we'll focus on for this hymn is that it says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Our offertory hymn is number 493, Have Thine Own Way, which is often used as a decision or response hymn after a message. But because it says, you are the potter and I am the clay, use this as a prayer to the Lord for our offertory to let the Lord take you and mold you into what you should be so that we will be like him. I invite you to stand as we sing all four stanzas.
from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 1 and 2. Dip your grain across the sea. After many days you may receive a return. Invest in seven ventures, yes, and eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Thank you for your faithfulness and for the ways that you give of your time, your talent, and your treasures to support the ministries of Mountain Brook Baptist Church. Each week during our offertory reading and prayer, we think about and pray for one of our mission partners. And this week we're praying for Ruba Abbasi. Ruba serves with the Arab Center for Consulting and Training Services and helps provide support to those who are affected by different crises in the Middle East, providing training, education, and other resources to help people and point them to the hope of the gospel. And so this week as you're praying, I would encourage you to remember Ruba and remember her family and their work in your prayers. Would you pray with me now? God, we thank you for every gift we have and we are reminded that every gift we have comes from you that you are a good giver lord you are a good father would you make us people who live with open hands who are ready to give back to you what is yours that we might see the gospel be made known in our city in our state in our country and even to the ends of the earth lord Would you make us people who are generous and who are ready and who are willing to give all we have that others might know the hope of the gospel? We pray especially for Ruba Abbasi this morning and for her work, where we ask for protection over her and over her family. We pray for the young adults there who just went through an evangelism training. We pray that you might give them boldness to proclaim the gospel in dark places. And we pray especially for the women they are ministering to who have been abused and who have walked through other great difficulties. Lord, we ask for your healing and for your hope and that they might know Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your kindness to us and for the hope we have because of Christ. I pray all this in his name. Amen. doing okay give me a thumbs up doing okay did you know that Jesus loves children in the Bible there are stories where Jesus welcomes the children and he hugs them and he blesses them some of the disciples weren't very excited when the children were around they thought that Jesus was being distracted by the children but as always Jesus knows best. Jesus' love for children is a picture of God's love for all of us. Because you see, we, as people who love Jesus and follow him, we are God's children. I want you to repeat that after me. We are God's children. You know what that means? You and I are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are all one family. Look out there at all the people in the sanctuary. Okay, without our mouths, but just our hands. How many of you have blue eyes? What about brown eyes? Yeah, y'all can do it out there too. Okay, green eyes. We're a little bit different, right, on the outside. How many of us have light skin and freckles? What about darker skin or tan skin? Anybody? Okay, how many of us like Alabama? How many of us like Auburn? 
Okay, we are a little bit different on the outside. And sometimes when you're in the same family, you kind of look alike. But in God's family, things are different, okay? It's not what's on the outside. It's what's on the inside. I want you to hit your chest. It's what's on the inside. It's not how you look on the outside. It's that you love Jesus and you want to follow him. In the scripture today that Dr. Wayne is going to preach, one of the things that says that if we love God, the main way you can see it is if you love your brother and sister. Now, some of you up here are natural-born brothers and sisters, but others of you are just church family. So I want you to look to the person beside you and say, I love you. I love you. Y'all do it too. I love you. Everybody. Because we are God's children, we love one another, and we want to follow him. All right, I want you to put your hands together, close your eyes, and let's repeat after me. God, thank you for loving us. Thank you for making us your children. Help us to love our brothers and sisters. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you can go back to your seats or go with me to preschool worship. a reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll read verses 50 through 54. Paul writes these words, I declare to you, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead, and the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He is If you would, just take a Bible and turn to the book of 1 John. 1 John chapter 3, uh, you'll find it on page 863 in your pew Bible. I'm actually going to start reading in verse 2, I mean chapter 2, verse 28. I thought Mary did a fine job on her children's sermon. My only critique is that um, she didn't include all of the SEC schools. <clears throat> So if you too feel like Mary's sermon wasn't very inclusive, I'm with you. <clears throat> First John, chapter 2, verse 28. I'm going to read through um, verse 10. So 2, 28 through 3, 10. John writes, And now, dear, dear children, continue in him, speaking of Christ, so that when he appears we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Everyone who breaks the law, in fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. No one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I would venture to guess that each of us in this room um, has some area of our lives in which we would like to see change. That probably every one of us, one of the things that we share together is that we would like to see change in our lives in some area. And the question is, how do we experience that change? It's not that we are unclear about the objective or what we hope to achieve, but it's more how do we get from A to B? And usually the biggest obstacle that you and I have in experiencing the change that we want to see is ourselves. We kind of look at all the different options out there or people that we can blame or circumstances or what we have or don't have. But when it comes down to the root of it, if you're like me, really the problem is not all of those um, circumstances, but the problem is me. At some point along the way, no matter how sincere I am in my desire to be better, or to change in some area, or to keep it up for a while, it seems like after a while, 
my best efforts and intentions fail me. And John addresses a topic here in this section of 1 John that I think all of us, um, we share the desire to more fully and more faithfully walk in righteousness and yield our lives to God's will. I would venture to guess that none of you got up this morning and you thought, man, it's a great day to sin. Right? Most of us woke up this morning and maybe at the start of the day before all the things had come rushing and flooding into our lives, there was this desire that, Lord, we want to live our lives in a way that's pleasing to you. But one of the things that John's already um, established in 1 John, and we looked at it last week, is that one thing that we also all share, in addition to our desire to change, is that all of us have sinned. Um, And all of us in the future will sin. And John gives us this assuring truth in 1 John that if we confess our sins, he is just and faithful to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. As, As we confess our sins, God forgives us and he gives us the very righteousness of Christ. And it's important that we establish that truth as we're looking at this passage because, again, John can make us a little bit uncomfortable, can he not? The one who goes on sinning is not a child of God, has not seen him, has not known him. And we know from Scripture and from our own experience that that none of us, until Christ returns and completes his work of making all things new, is going to be perfect in this life. We're going to stumble, we're going to fall short, we're going to sin against the Lord. But John's words to us this morning are a reminder that that you and I are not called to continue in a path of sinfulness without some sense of remorse or without some sense of confession and returning back to him. And anyone who would come into our lives and make us feel like Um, It's okay to continue walking in a path of sin or outside of God's will that would comfort us in our disobedience. It's important for us to be reminded that that's not in keeping with God's word or his will for us. That God desires better for us than for us to continue to walk in sin and, and someone who would counsel us against continuing down that path in a way that's not consistent with God's word is, is bringing something that is not true into our lives. So how do we experience change and to walk in the righteousness that we would like to see in our lives? This is um, one of those truths where um, I picture myself sitting down across from one of my good friends. And uh, if I told him, hey, God doesn't want you to sin anymore. You know what he would say to me? Well, duh. (laughs) Yeah, I, I, I get that. And probably me telling you this morning, go out and don't sin anymore. How helpful will that be for you this week? Um, It would be interesting if we put a sign out in the front yard of the church or by the sidewalk and we said, don't step on the grass. How many of you just with everything you have would want to step on that grass? It's not just knowing the rules and then resolving not to um, transgress them. But you and I need a deeper understanding of who God is, who we are and how we belong to him and the difference that that makes in his love for us. We need to be reminded of the hope that we have that, that one day you and I will not walk in a fallen world and be separated in any way from God's presence. So the hope that we have that we will be in his presence and we will become like him needs to be a hope that that carries us each day. And then we need to be reminded that we are called not to walk in our own strength and our own power, but we're called to remain and abide in Jesus. Now I want you to see the first part in 1 John chapter 3. I want to start out with, with who we are and whose we are. You might picture a parent getting their child ready to go out, maybe for the first time driving to hang out with friends. There's kind of that fear and trepidation. It's like, ah, 
right? We're losing control. We're not going to be with you. And you might have heard this as a child or say this yourself. Remember who you are. Remember that you belong to us. In a way, I want you to think about who you are and who you belong to this morning. John writes, see what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God and so we are. Now, that verse alone should just cause you to gasp in disbelief. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. As Mary had the children up here at the front and, and reminding them that they are children of God and they are precious in his sight. You and I need to be reminded of that truth. That God's great love is shown for us and that even while we were sinners, Christ died for us and he's not just a judge that forgives us of a sin or a trespass or breaking a law, but he is our heavenly father who adopts us into his family. That the God of all creation, the righteous and holy one has seen us in our sin He's forgiven us through faith in Christ, and that is an expression of his deep love for us. That we should be called children of God. It's important that you remember that because many times when you're going to be tempted to sin, it's going to be because you've forgotten that God is your father and that he loves you. It's going to be because you've forgotten that God is your father and that he loves you. So there are these messages that you and I hear all the time that are contrary to what we know God's will for us would be. And just like the serpent in the garden, there is this thought inside our hearts, either from the world or for the devil himself saying, does he really love you? Does he really have your best interests in mind? Is he keeping you from something that will ultimately fulfill the desires of your heart? And when you and I start to forget that God is good and gracious and benevolent and that he is our father and that he loves us with such great love that it really you and I can't fully comprehend it, it then starts winning that fight in our hearts and our minds that, that leads us to more obedience. So I want, I want you to remind yourself each day not just to not sin, I want you to remind yourself each day that, that God is your heavenly father and that he has shown his love for you so clearly in sending his son into the world to be the perfect sacrifice for your sin and that you ultimately belong to him. That he has given you everything that you need for life and godliness and in those moments where you're at the crossroads of obedience or disobedience, Allow that truth that, that God is your gracious heavenly father to win the day in your heart by the power of the spirit. If you're here and you're a parent or a grandparent, you kind of know how this works, right? That, that you give your children parameters, you give them rules for their safety and ultimately for their flourishing. In, in a very similar way, God does that for us. And so our obedience flows not out of our trying to earn God's favor um, not trying to make ourselves more impressive in our own strength, but from that deep sense of identity that I am a child of God and that he loves me. And you're going to walk through seasons of life that you're going to question that perhaps. We're just being real honest with each other this morning. And in those moments and in those seasons, we allow the truth of scripture and what God's done for us in Christ to win the day that God is our good and gracious heavenly father, that he loves us and that you and I yield our lives to him in love and obedience, not because, again, that we'll earn anything from him, but because we believe that he's good and gracious and is leading us ultimately into abundant and eternal life. And anything that would pull you away from that is sin. Anything that would pull you away from that. And one of the things that you and I sometimes struggle with is that we know these things to be true in our heart and that some days we don't experience the fullness of the identity that we've been given. That, that what we are, we are currently children of God, but what we will be has not yet been fully revealed. 
John would say. And he fixes our eyes on that day, that great hope when when you and I will see the Lord. I want you to just let yourself think about that just for a moment. That was a really powerful truth for me this week as I was reading this passage and thinking about that. Is that one day I will be in the very presence of God the Father. And when I experience that, all the things that I struggle with in this life will be no more. That ultimately I'll be transformed into the person that God all along has been creating me to be. And John says, everyone who has that hope, and that is a wonderful hope that we have as followers of Jesus, that that one day... This fallen world will give way to the new heavens and the new earth and the sin that you and I have fought and struggled against for years and years will be no more and we'll finally be in that relationship again with him that we desire. And he says, everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. Everyone who has this hope that one day I will be in the very presence of the Lord, there ought to be two things maybe feelings you have at the thought of that. One, perhaps a healthy fear and terror, and that's okay. But the other is this longing to be at home where you, where you know you belong, in his presence. And as things will be then, John encourages us to begin to strive for that now, to purify ourselves even as he is pure. I can't think of a better illustration, and I probably shared it with you before but in the summertime my sister and I would stay at home by ourselves and we did not always turn to each other and say I love you right there were some seasons of strife there were some seasons of seeing things differently right you know you need to do this you need to do that and we knew what the expectations were before my mom got home She used to get home first. And I just remember this as a sign of her grace that she would pick the phone up at work and she would call. I'm leaving work. I'll see y'all in a little while. How do you think our behavior changed with that truth? (laughs) Beds were made. Dishes were washed, right? We kind of straightened ourselves up because we knew that she was coming. That one day, one moment, she was going to appear on the other side of that door, and we wanted to be ready. I think it's okay for us to to allow the eventual return of the Father and understanding that we will appear before him to impact how we live now. And you see that in other places in Scripture, that, that you and I live within the reality that one day the Lord will return. And we can get fooled into um, disobedience or not living in light of that truth as each day passes by. And so we remind ourselves as brothers and sisters in Christ that the Father one day and the Son will come back. And that hope of being before him influences how we live in the moment. And we begin to purify ourselves even as he is pure. But the things that we're doing now and the things that we're giving our heart to ought to be the same things that we would be okay if the Father himself were in the room with us. So we start to purify ourselves even as he is pure. So remember that you are a child of God and that he loves you. And that everything he calls you to pursue and everything that he calls you to avoid, he does so because he he knows how you're made and he knows how you're going to experience satisfaction and joy and abundant life. And so yield your heart to him in obedience out of your great love and trust to him. Remember that one day you will appear before him. One day you'll appear before him. 
So even now, ask the Holy Spirit to be at work in your heart to purify you even as he is pure. And then the last one um, that I want to give you is that I want you to abide in Christ every moment of every day. Abide in Christ. If you read the letter of 1 John, and maybe you'll do this, it's short. It's only five chapters. If you read the letter of 1 John, read through it and circle every time you see the word abide. Or it might be in your translation, remain. Abide or remain in Christ. Makes me think about the passage from John chapter 15. Where Jesus would say, I'm the vine, you are the, you're the branches. Abide in me and you will bear much fruit for apart from me you can do what? Nothing. Apart from Jesus, you and I can do nothing. And so the place that you and I live the Christian life from is a place of real and utter dependence upon the Lord. In every moment of every day that God gives us, I want us to think about being people who abide or remain in Jesus. Because part of our struggle with pursuing righteousness is that we try to do it in our own power or in our own strength. We think, I got this. This time it'll be different. This time I'll respond to that challenge or that temptation in a positive way. And anything, any teaching that would lead you to some greater sense of dependence upon yourself is heretical. The goal of Christian discipleship is not for you to become strong to the point that you need God less and less. The point of Christian discipleship is for you to recognize your weakness and your need more and more so that you rely upon Jesus' work among you. I was at the ball field last night, and you won't believe this, but the umpire wasn't great. (laughs) Especially when my team was batting, particularly bad. And in my flesh, it's all, I, all I wanted to do was to tell him how bad he was and to point out the things he was missing. And I'm, I'm sure the perks of being an umpire for a 14U baseball game are pretty impressive, I'm sure. And I stepped away and I walked to the concession stand and, and the, the words of 1 John were just kind of ringing in my ears, abide in Christ. Abide in Jesus. If Christ himself were here beside you, how would you act? What would you say? How would you treat that guy behind the plate? Because, you know, there's a good chance that he was my brother, right? Decent chance he was my brother. Someone who had placed his faith in Christ, someone who had the same hope that I have, someone who's living the same struggle that I'm living, trying to put one foot in front of the other and be more of who God's called him to be, chances are that's true. So I went back to my seat, just bit my tongue, (laughs) and watched the end of the game. And you know when I walked in my car that I felt so much better about life than I would have had I responded in another way? I just chose... To abide in Christ in that moment and to choose his path for my, for my life and to his will. And you and I are going to fight, face a lot greater temptations than screaming at an umpire. You're going to face a lot of um, more difficult things out there before you than those ultimately trivial things. But I want you and I want myself daily not to walk in my own power but to abide in Jesus Christ and ask him to bear fruit in me. The ultimate is not about me or my ability or my righteousness, but I need to remember that God's my Father, that one day I will appear before Him, and that every moment my life and my righteousness flows from abiding in Jesus. Um, and I want to say one word before I pray. Um, if you're walking through some 
season of life where per- perhaps there's particularly a besetting sin that you're struggling with and, and perhaps it's, um, to use a phrase, it's eating your lunch and you're just kind of out there by yourself with it. Let me just tell you my experience is that it's not going to get much better while you're out there by yourself with it. And so know that if you need somebody to talk to, church staff, um, we're here to pray for you and walk alongside you. I used to tell the youth when I worked with them that you're never going to come to me and tell me something and I'm going to go. (laughs) Uh, Chances are they're not coming back, right? Remember that, parents, whatever they tell you. Try to respond with grace and mercy and kindness so they'll come back. Um, But in all seriousness, if there's something that you're just wrestling with, know that that your church staff and others would love to pray alongside and walk alongside you um, in those areas. Um, God's given us community and church for a reason. So just encourage you with that. Bye, if you would, to pray with me. God, we thank you for your word, and we thank you that you are our good and gracious Heavenly Father. And that we never have to question your love for us. So we pray that you would forgive us when we are hard-headed and hard-hearted. And when we set out to find pleasure or satisfaction or contentment anywhere apart from you. We thank you that you are a good and gracious father always ready to welcome us back as we confess and turn to you and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and give us the perfect righteousness of our older brother. Pray that you would help us to be encouraged with the reality that one day you will return. And may the thought of being in your presence purify us even now as you are pure and help us every moment of every day to remain and abide in you. Help us to be that for each other. We offer this prayer in Christ's name. Amen. If you're here this morning, you've never publicly professed your faith in Christ, and God's calling you to do that, or if you feel like God's calling you to be a member here at Mountain Brook Baptist Church, um, I'll be at the front to receive you, or if you just need to pray or sing um, wherever you are. However God's leading you to respond, I invite you to do so as we stand and sing. Thank you so much for your presence here uh, this morning. If you're a guest and I haven't had a chance to meet you, I would love for a chance just to shake your hand and welcome you to our church, um, perhaps connect you with a Sunday school class if you're interested in staying for that. Um, next weekend, I will be out of town. I'll be in Florida screaming at umpires. I mean, <laughs> watching baseball. Uh, and Ethan McVeigh is going to preach uh, next weekend. And so be praying for Ethan. Um, he's already been, as you might expect, very diligently preparing for his sermon next week. Um, Ethan, if you haven't met him, minister to preteen and junior high students, and uh, he'll do a wonderful job. So be praying for Ethan, and um, make sure you encourage and support him um, next week. Um, and also continue to pray for all the people who are on our prayer list, especially um, Joey Gleason's family. Um, continue to lift them up in prayer. And um, know how much uh, you mean to me. I'm so glad that you're here. I invite you, if you would, to remain standing as our choir dismisses us. Oh,